All right. Well, thank you very much for coming along today. My name is uh, Emma Hurd, and I am the CEO of the Investor Group on Climate Change uh, from Australia and New Zealand. Um, let me just double check. Is this one on as well? Okay, good. Look, I think uh, we really appreciate you coming along and attending this uh, this session today. I, I think, as you would have heard this morning uh, from from Series CEO and President Mindy Mindy Luba, who's also here. During her opening remarks from the Series Investor Summit, um, what we're seeing is a, is a huge amount of momentum created by the global investor community in response to the Paris Agreement and in terms of the urgent call to tackle climate change. But we also know that we need to do more and investors themselves also need to do more in the lead up to 2020 and as we move into the next phase of action on climate change. We know that uh, individual investors represented by some fantastic speakers here today have taken uh, some really innovative and exciting action in responding to climate change, supported by a number of regional investor uh, and global organisations in terms of pulling together supportive frameworks, tools and resources to continue to accelerate action on climate change. But we also know that uh, given where we are in the debate, given where we are in the lead up to 2020, that what we really need now is a unified global platform in which to continue to accelerate investor action. So in response to this, we're very excited to announce today the debut of the investor agenda. Developed by seven partner organisations, including the Asia Investor Group on Climate Change, CDP, Ceres, the Investor Group on Climate Change, which I represent from Australia and New Zealand, the Institutional Investors Group on Climate Change from Europe, the Principles for Responsible Investment, and the UNEP Finance Initiative. The Investor Agenda is a comprehensive platform for investors to manage climate risk and to really begin to capture low carbon investment opportunities. It's also a mechanism to bring together and to report on investor progress across four key focus areas. This includes investment, uh, corporate engagement, investor disclosure, and policy advocacy. And the speakers that we have today will talk about some of the specific actions that they're taking against each of those four focus areas, just to really put some more specific detail on the table by what we mean by those four key focus areas as well. The investor agenda itself provides a clear menu of actions for global investors to take organised into these areas and all of these areas are where we have seen investors continuing to take more uh, and growing action when dealing with the issues of climate change. So it's now my pleasure to introduce some of the, uh, the real investors who will be talking about what they're doing to already pursue uh, uh, opportunity in this new exciting uh, emerging area. So firstly, we'll hear from Peter Damgard Jensen, who's the, the CEO of PKA, who will talk to us about some of the actions being taken on investment. We'll then hear from Betty Yee, who's a Californian controller, to talk about uh, some really exciting work going on in corporate engagement, uh, and in particular the Climate Action 100 Plus, as well as a number of other uh, in investor activities. Uh, we'll be hearing about uh, Fred Samama, who's the Deputy Global Head of Institutional and Sovereign Clients from Amundi, who will be talking about investor disclosure activities. And then finally, I'm sure someone needs no introduction, we'll be hearing from Jack Enos, who's the CEO of, CEO of Calsters, who will be talking about policy advocacy. One final comment I would just make is that we also do have the, uh, the CEOs of the supporting and convening investor organisations who've developed this platform here today. Uh, they are here in the room, so if you do wish to follow up with specific questions with the convening organisations as well, they're also here and available for further comment. Uh, but now I would like to, to, to hand over to you, Peter, just to talk about some of the actions being taken against investment. Yes, thank you very much. Um, it's clear that in order to meet the goals uh, by the Paris Agreement, we need to significantly increase the level of new investments uh, in low carbon technologies and energy efficiency, and reduce investments in high impact sectors and activities, including the extraction of and use of fossil fuels. That's uh, the overall uh, objective. The investment focus area of the invest investor agenda includes also reporting and new and on new and exist existing low carbon investments and commitments and phasing out investments in coal and integrating climate change into portfolio ana ana anal analysis and decision making. All investors must ramp up their efforts towards low carbon allocation. And to mention the way we until now have worked with this issue at PK, 
we are doing our part to scale up uh, our green investments. Currently, we have 7%, uh, and that's about 3 billion US dollars of assets dedicated to this. It's including offshore wind parks, where most of this, these investments are, green bonds, and sustainable forestry. In the wind parks, we have invested it uh, until now. They produce uh, 2.3 gigawatt, and we hope in the next years to invest in even more wind parks. We have a goal that in 2020, uh, we will have 10% of our investments in this area, and that should be around 5 billion US dollars. Uh, and I can say that a lot of my Danish colleagues are doing the same. So if we look at the total Danish uh, uh, institutional investor uh, commitments in this area, I think we are even up to a bigger number. Uh, and the investments are paying off. I think that's important to say. We invested in the first big offshore wind park back in 2011. It was 400 megawatts, and now they're up to 1,000 megawatts, the biggest part. And we are in five parks now. And we, if you look at the returns over this year, it's been 13%. Uh, you could say it might have been higher if we had been in um, equities last year. But it, if you look for a five to six year period, that's actually quite good. We are also, and that's the other part of the coin, we are also actively engage in a dialogue with major listed coal, coal, oil, and gas companies. This conversation and dialogue is very critical in promoting and activating a realistic climate strategy. And we actually have gone one step further on. If we can see after having a dialogue for several years and nothing is changing in these companies, we actually divest them. And we have divested a lot of coal companies because we actually can see or can't see they're doing anything. But we, we are just one example. We are asking other investors to look at their own portfolios and see, what, see where their climate strategy can be Im implemented. Not only will this help us achieve the goals set out by the Paris Agreement, but it's also good business. Since 2015, where we divested a lot of coal companies, the listed U.S. coal companies, where a lot of these companies actually were, have fallen 50% approximately compared to the stock market. So this was actually a clever decision, even though it also might be a lucky decision. So the statistic actually shows that in the long run, divesting the most vulnerable companies can be a good decision. Thanks very much, Peter. Uh, Betty, I wonder if I can turn to you now to talk about the, uh, the corporate uh, engagement area of activity uh, uh, under the investor agenda and some of the other initiatives there. Absolutely. Thank you, Hannah. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I uh, am Betty Yee. I'm California controller. I serve on the boards of CalPERS and CalSTRS and also a series board member. Uh, we know that delivering the Paris Agreement uh, goal to keep the global temperature below two degrees Celsius requires cuts of around 80% of global greenhouse gas emissions by 2050, uh, while also pursuing a just transition for those employed in the impacted sectors. So the corporate engagement focus area of the investor agenda really calls upon investors to step up efforts to press companies in their portfolios to reduce emissions. And uh, a key part of um, corporate engagement uh, and this focus is the global initiative known as Climate Action 100 Plus. It is supported by many of the largest and most influential asset owners and managers in the world. Today, we are pleased to report the list of investors' signatories on Climate Action 100 Plus is now at 256 investors who manage nearly 28 trillion in assets under management. And these investors will engage with more than 100 of the world's largest corporate greenhouse gas emitters. They will be asking these companies to take action to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions across their value chain, <clears throat> provide enhanced corporate disclosure in line with the final recommendations of the Financial Stability Board Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosures, the TCFD, and to implement a strong governance framework. Now, these 100-plus companies are critical in delivering on the goals of the Paris Agreement. We will also engage more widely with thousands of other companies through CDP's disclosure and action requests. 
Disclosure is another important focus of the investor agenda that I would like to focus my remarks on. The agenda also encourages investors to report in line with the TCFD recommendations. Financial markets are underpricing carbon risk, and very few analysts incorporate any discussion of carbon risks in the reports that they send to investors. So improved transparency by investors enables their clients, beneficiaries, and other stakeholders to understand just how climate change related risks and opportunities are being assessed and managed. These investor disclosures also increase the credibility of investor demands uh, for more consistent, comparable, and reliable disclosure of climate related information by the companies in which they invest. This is an important step in enabling market forces to support an accelerated transition to a low carbon economy. And uh, just very, very grateful to all the investors who have stepped up and we invite others to join us. Uh, very exciting initiative, the first of its kind in terms of this collaborative global engagement strategy. Thanks very much, Benny. And I, I hope you can really begin to see how this platform intends to or aims to bring together some of the major initiatives that we've seen in the last few years, whether it's through the TCFD, the Climate Action 100 Plus, the work of C, uh, CDP, and other sorts of projects that we're about to hear more about as well under UNEPFI, to really begin to showcase the full breadth of investor activity and the growing momentum in support of climate change action. So on that note, I'd now like to invite Fred Samama from uh, Amundi to talk about how asset managers are also dealing with some of these issues, and in particular around the area of disclosure as well. Hello, and thank you, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we'll have a key word uh, that is responsibility, responsibility for asset owners, and responsibility for asset managers. So responsibility for asset owners. There's a growing consensus that long-term oriented investors are facing a market failure. As markets are short-term oriented, they don't price correctly the risks associated with climate change. So it's part of their future responsibility to assess these risks and to adjust their portfolios. It is exactly Max Carney's position. And interestingly, this approach is now being supported by more and more policymakers around the planet, Article 173 in France or TCFD. Now, responsibility for asset managers. At Amundi, we are the largest asset manager in Europe. We manage about $1.6 trillion. And we think that we have three responsibilities. The first one is to develop innovative products in order to help our clients align their portfolios with the low carbon economy. So we have been a pioneer in developing low carbon indexes. It's a technology that helps reduce climate change related risks over the long run without changing market exposure over the short run. We did that back in 2011 for AP4 and FR. And we are very glad now to see that Calsters, New York Common Retirement Fund, New Zealand Superannuation Fund, and GPIF are all using this technology. More recently, we have been uh, selected by IFC to launch a very innovative green bond fund that is a PPP capital market partnership aiming at developing green bonds in emerging markets where it's still lagging. The second responsibility we feel is to encourage the sharing of best practices. We have been one of the four funding members with UNEPFI, CDP, and AP4 to create a platform of sharing of knowledge between the doers, the asset owners that are already sharing their experiments, that are already uh, aligning their portfolios with the low carbon economy. And I'm glad to report that we have $4 trillion and commitment for $600 billion. And last but not least, to set an example, we have been the first asset manager signatory to the PRI. The PRI members now represent half of, of the uh, institutional assets in the market. And so we encourage all PRI, nearly 2,000 signatories, <coughs> to step up the actions against climate change in terms of low carbon investment, green finance, engagement, and disclosure. Just to conclude, we are observing a fascinating moment where civil society is entering the game. For the past 20 years, it was only in the hands of governments and NGOs. And now investors are entering the game. <coughs> it's, it can be really a turning point on climate change. And if we continue to mobilize these assets, it can really create the pressure that we are all looking for on polluting companies. Thank you.
Thank you. I mean, again, just the, uh, the interconnectedness of the four areas. You can see how disclosure, increased disclosure on actual climate change performance on the part of companies is beginning to underpin the develop of more mainstream financial products which are based on performance of the companies on the, uh, <coughs> off the back of that reported information. So all of these initiatives feed into each other to grow investor activity. So finally, Jack, if I could turn you. to you just to talk to the fourth area of the investor agenda around policy and advocacy. Absolutely. Good afternoon. While uh, many of us feel moved to act on social, moral, or environmental convictions, every investor here, every company makes market-based decisions based on a regulatory structure and policy certainty. Policy provides the signals, the incentives that direct the flow of capital throughout our economy. That's why policy advocacy as part of this agenda is absolutely essential. It calls on investors to put their considerable influence behind forward-thinking, smart policies that accelerate and create investments in a low-carbon economy. First and foremost, we need investors to stand up and support the Paris Agreement. Ratified by 173 countries, this agreement gives us the global context to act on climate-specific goals. Investors must urge lawmakers not only to implement the agreement, but to expand their ambitions on climate policy by 2020. Secondly, but no less important, we need a price on carbon. We all know the capital markets work best when we have honest pricing signals. Currently, carbon pollution, which is costing society hundreds of billions of dollars per year, is priced too low, or in some cases, not at all. That's unacceptable. Carbon pollution is not an externality that should be ignored. It is a real cost that needs to be internalized into market decisions. Pricing carbon appropriately will correct our capital markets and give investors the certainty they need to act on climate and further accelerate this transition. Beyond the Paris Agreement and carbon pricing, investors must also raise their voice and make sure lawmakers understand the business case for clean energy and reduced emissions on both the state and national level. Is this really achievable? Let's look at California. As our governor recently indicated in his State of the State speech, we've already taken critical policy steps in this state to move this agenda forward. We've extended our cap and trade system to 2030. We have a very aggressive building and appliance efficiency standard. We have a powerful low carbon fuel standard. We have incentives for zero emission vehicles, and we have policies to reduce climate pollutants like methane and black carbon. So it is doable. Policy engagement is a fundamental pillar of the investor agenda because it's a natural extension of investor responsibility and it's our fiduciary duty to act in the interests of our beneficiaries. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jack. And I, I, I think what's quite clear is that the, uh, the broad coalition of civil society, state, uh, subnational investor and business um, stakeholders, which were so important to actually achieving the Paris Agreement itself in December 2015, are now also just as important, if not more so, in actually achieving the goals set out in the Paris Agreement, and in particular in terms of scaling up ambition for the next two years. And investors as global, uh, as global capital allocators, as supporters of the global economy, are incredibly important in actually achieving that, that increased trajectory of ambition. So I, I just want to quickly thank uh, um, uh, Peter, Betty, Fred and Jack for their comments here for today and for also sharing the intent and the ambition behind the investor agenda uh, which uh, and its four focus areas which we're debuting today. I just want to add that this is really the beginning for this particular platform. We've set out the framework. Um, the seven investor organisations who've come together to actually establish this framework will now begin to, to really grow the numbers which will sit behind these four areas. And uh, really looking by September and the, 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 the uh, Californian summit uh, in September to really announce and finalise the launch of those numbers against those four focus areas. And over the next few months, we really invite investors to begin using the website, uh, www.theinvestoragenda.org, as a resource for determining themselves which actions will be most impactful and feasible for their business and, of course, for the goals of the Paris Agreement. Uh, so I would, again, just to thank you uh, for being here today.